Welcome to the third part of the pharmaceutical calculations and in this short lecture we will be focusing on the calculations for concentrated solutions and the calculations involving density factors of specific gravity. Why do we need the calculation for concentrated solutions? In pharmaceutical settings, we will have quite a number of the solutions which is in diluted form and they are usually bulky and take up a lot of space. On top of that, they are also very difficult to carry because they are heavy. So to avoid these hassles, we prepare them in the concentrated form and when we need, we will dilute them with distilled water or suitable vehicles. And this a good example of that is antiseptics and disinfectants. So the expressions of the units is usually in, expressed in the form of one part in how many parts of the solutions. So I would like to introduce to you two new expressions of units here. The first one is 1 in a number. So for example, 1 in 250 it means that 1 gram in 250 mil and this also can be expressed in the form of ratio 1 double dot 250 so it gives you the same meanings so to express that in terms of percentage weight in volumes it is equal to 0 0.4 so you must able to convert from each of these units from percentage to the expressions in terms of ratio or parts in parts. There are other types of expressions of unit which is called parts per million and this usually is used for very very diluted solutions. So this parts per million or ppm means that one part of the dissolved substances by weight in 1 million parts of volume. So 5 ppm for example means that you have 5 gram in 1 million ml. Let's look at the first example where you have to prepare 500 ml of potassium permanganate solutions in which one part of it to be diluted with two parts of water which give you a solution with a concentration of 1 in 6000. Let's just illustrate in the picture form. Imagine that you will have 500 ml of potassium permanganate stock or concentrated solutions, and you're taking one part of it out to be diluted with two parts of water, you will end up with a solution with a concentration of 1 in 6000. So, first, you need to know the final volume. It doesn't state that how much is one part. So let's just take one part as 500 ml since that we need to prepare 500 ml. So total up we have three parts of the solutions means that we will have three times the 500 ml needed which is 1500 ml. And the final concentration is given here 1 in 6000 meaning is 1 gram is 6000 mil. So for 100, for sorry, for 1500 mil of this final solutions, we will have 0 0.25 gram of potassium permanganate. So to be put in the table form, so for 6000 mil, you will need 1 gram. So for 1500 mil, you will need 0 0.25 grams. And this belongs to three parts of the solution, but the potassium permanganate only comes from one part of the solution. So it means that this 0.25 grams also presents in the 500 mil, which is the one part. So it may sound a bit confusing. Let's look. In this case, we're assuming one part is equal to 500 mil. So the final volume will be 1500 ml. So in this case, 
In this solution, we have 0.25 gram of potassium permanganate. So this 0.25 gram actually comes from one part of the concentrated solutions, and this gives you back that in actual stocks concentrated solutions, you will have 0.25 gram in 500 ml. So the end up the initial concentration of the stock solutions is 0.05% weight in volume. There is another way of calculating. Since we know that the final volume is equal to 1500 and we have the final concentrations of 1 gram in 6000 ml or in the form of percentage weight per volume, it is equal to 0 0.0167. So we can now apply the equations we learned before, C1, V1 equal to C2, V2. And in this case, we are doing a dilution. So this equation just come at the right time. So let's take the first solution as the final diluted solutions. We just substitute the concentration and the volume needed. And the second solutions, the concentration is unknown, but the initial volume, we know that we need to prepare one part and we take one part as 500 ml. So end up the concentrations is 0.05% weight per volume. So it means that for 500 ml of it, we need 0.25 gram. In this second example, you are required to prepare 100 ml of 0.9% weight in volume potassium chloride solutions from a concentrated one with uh, concentrations of 1 in 45. So first, you need to know what does it mean by 1 in 45 or a ratio 1 to 45. It means 1 gram in 45 ml and when you convert it into percentage rate per volumes to make it standardized so that it's easy for us to use the equations of C1, V1 equal to C2V2. So whenever you put in, you must make sure that the unit is the same. So simply put in or substitute the equation with the numbers. Given the first solution is the diluted, we need 100 ml of 0.9% potassium chloride solutions taken from unknown volume of 2.22% of stock solutions. You will end up that you actually need 40.5 ml of these stock solutions to prepare 0.9% potassium chloride solutions and you just top up the rest with distilled water. So to check back in 40.5 ml of 2.22% potassium chloride solutions, the amount of potassium chloride is actually equal to 0.9 grams. So it just match with the concentration that you're going to prepare which is 0.9% weight in volume because you have 0.9 gram in 100 ml of the final solution. We move on to the calculations for concentrated solution with the expressions of unit in parts per million or ppms. So in this case, you have to prepare 600 ml of sodium fluoride solutions where one tablespoon of it diluted to two cup of water will give you a final solution of 3 ppm. Again, if we illustrate them in the picture, imagine that you have 600 ml of these stock solutions. When you take one tablespoon to be diluted to two cup of water, so in this case, you will have a final solution of 3 ppm. And remember that in this case, the final volume is 2 cup because we are diluted to 2 cup of water and we are not diluted with 2 cup of water. So you have to be careful with the questions. First, we need to know the meanings of ppm here. 
So 3 ppm equal to 3 gram in 1 million mil. So for 480 mil, which is equal to 2 cups of the final solutions, the amount of sodium fluoride needed is 480 times 3 divided by, divided by 1 million and you will get 1.4 milligrams. So for 1 tablespoon, the amount of sodium fluoride is 1.4 mg because this 1.4 mg coming from the stock solutions of this 1 tablespoon. And to calculate back the 600 ml of the stock solutions, the amount of sodium fluoride present is taking the ratio of 1.4 mg in 50 ml and how much we have in 600 ml, you will end up that you have 56 mg. So to put them in the table form for your clarifications, so the stock solution we have is 56 mg of sodium fluoride in a final distilled water of 600 ml. Again, we put that in a picture and illustrate them for your understanding. So we have now two cups of the final diluted solutions of 3 ppm and in this 3 ppm of 480 ml we have 1.4 mg and this 1.4 mg actually come from the one tablespoon that you're putting in and this one tablespoon has 50 ml of water so it means that for 600 ml we will have 56 mg in the stock solutions. Calculation involving density factor or specific gravity is very important when it comes to viscous solutions or viscous liquid. And because viscous liquid is difficult to be measured by volume, as it is difficult to be removed from the measuring equipment. So in this case, we can convert them into weight so that we can just weight it on a balance to take the amount needed. Let's look at this example where you have to express acetate acid in the form of percentage weight per volume from percentage weight in weight. So in this case, we need the density factor. The density of acetic acid is equal to 1.04 gram per mil and 32.5% weight in weight means you have 32.5 gram in 100 grams. However, you need to convert the gram into mil. So how much is 100 gram is equal to for acetic acid in terms of volume? So you just need to take the amount in terms of weight divided by the density and you'll find that 100 gram of acetic acid is equal to 96 ml. So 32.5 gram in 100 gram is equal to 32.5 gram per 96.15 ml. So in 100 ml, the amount of acetic acid needed is 36.61 gram. So it means that in percentage weight per volume, 36.61 gram is needed for 100 ml. So the expressions in terms of percentage weight in volume will be 36.61. Thank you again for your attention. We have done the calculations for concentrated solutions and some of the dilutions technique together with the calculations using specific gravity or density factor.